Well, until we can plot a new course, we'll save a lot of fuel by going into that planet's orbit. Okay with me if there are no trigger happy lookouts down there who don't like orbiting strangers. Well, we have a spectrum on plant life, and that's it. There's no other form of life down there. And what could be safer than a slew of pleasant purple meadows? Maureen, we're going into the orbit of that planet we're approaching. So stand by, dear. Yes, John. <laughs> yourself. You know, I really think it was an awfully good idea of Will's to think of having a birthday cake for the robot. <laughs> when I told him, he practically blew his power pack with embarrassment. But he's okay now. He can hardly wait. <laughs> Put this in the cooling unit, will you, dear? I'm going to wash my hands. Mmm, delicious. I'll take some potato. <clears throat> oh, William. I was just arranging these lovely things. William, what in the world is the matter with your eye? Well, I was getting the robot's present down from my closet, and the door got in the way. It's absolutely ridiculous to have all this excitement over him. Well, aren't you happy about the robot's birthday party, Dr. Smith? No, I am not. Well, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. What are you going to give him for a present? It's a surprise. You know, what this table lacks is, is real plants and, and ferns and stuff like that. I mean, Penifixie is nice, but it's just plastic stuff. I'll bet there are lots of real ones down on that planet we're orbiting. But that's not going to do us any good, is it? Well, I think I'll go wrap my gift. Excuse me. Somehow we'd establish friendly relations with that bubble-headed booby in the event I need his help. But how shall I go about it? Yes, I have it. Flowers. Real flowers. I shall give him red roses for his birthday. Birthday indeed. He won't be able to resist them. And he'll swear on dying loyalty to me. On my deed, we shall see. What a lovely looking planet. Are you gentlemen going to visit it, Smith? Don't you ever listen to the intercom. Plotting a new course. Two or three hours in no orbit. That's all we have in mind. We'll lock on the Cygnus Nebula for our escape path. Mm -hmm. Hold that course. Uh, one hour. All right, got it. Full power. You're quite right, Major, not to visit that dreadful planet. For all we know, it's probably infested with all manner of savage beasts. Poisonous serpents, predatory monsters. On the contrary, there's nothing down there but vegetation. Good. I mean, uh, how nice. We're still not visiting. We'd exhaust too much fuel on liftoff. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I quite understand. Well, everything's under control. I vote we set the ship on automatic and get below for that party. All right, I second the motion. Escape procedures in 90 minutes. It's quite simple. I shall go down to that planet, gather an armful of exotic flora, and surprise the robot with a magnificent gift of aromatic blue. He will, of course, be so grateful he'll be my slave forever.
beautiful jungle paradise. What was that? Probably nothing. At any rate, this seems a little large. I'll see what else I can find. Mother Nature, how glorious. Ah, yes, this will do nicely. Was it you who spoke? I witnessed your crime. What crime? I committed no crime. You murdered them. You shouldn't have done that. Now you will pay for it. A life for a life. <laughs> for the birthday of a dear friend. A dear, dear friend. If only he were here with me now. Like all you denizens of the animal kingdom, you have no feelings for anyone but yourselves. Killer, that's what you are. One of those hideous, warm-blooded killers. No! No, I'm not! Watch it! You almost crushed the life out of my Epigia. There, there. So sorry. Forgive me, it was unintentional. Sure, that's what they all say. No! Stay away, do you hear? I ask you to please stay away. Oh! What is this? Oh, thank heaven, another human being. Well, not precisely. I was space wrecked here several hundred years ago, and Tybo was kind enough to save my life with a heart transplant. But you are human. No. It was Letta's heart. A perfect wedding of two worlds. He's Tybo's best friend, aren't you, Willoughby? Well, do I have any choice? I know what might happen to me if I were your enemy. This is the enemy. He would grind the faces of the vegetable kingdom. Oh, that's not true. I wouldn't dream of it. But this is the opportunity we've been waiting for. A chance for the vegetable kingdom to come into its own. But I assure you, my dear sir, I adore vegetables. I always have. They're so full of vitamins and minerals and all good things. You'll be pleased to know that I eat them regularly, cooked or raw. Did you hear that, Willoughby? 
He eats vegetables. He enjoys eating vegetables. No, no, I don't enjoy it. A few moments ago, when you murdered those flowers, you signed your death warrant. But I've changed my mind. I'm commuting your sentence. To what? Willoughby, check his potential for a new life form. Well, he, he looks all right. But his bones are terribly brittle. And the rest of him is a bit on the jellyfish side. He may never mature. Leave it to me, Willoughby. I'll find a life form to suit him. But I like my present life form. I'm devoted to it. I've had it for many years. Oh! I don't want another life form! Oh! 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 best of my capabilities as a robot, I will try to be happy. And here's mine. It's nothing special, but there are no stores up here. Do not apologize, Will Robinson. I appreciate the thought as much as the gift. <laughs> Honey, uh, why don't you get the cake? All right. The cake, right away. Dr. Smith may be angry. We had a few words. He can't stay angry at you on your birthday. I'll go get him. All right. Who's up? Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Some more. All right. You bet you can. Mm. I'll have some too. Thank you. Yes. Right. Dad? Yeah? He isn't in here. He's probably up top sulking and wants to be cooks. Correction. Dr. Smith is not sulking up top. My sensors indicate that he took off in the pod and landed it on the planet which we are now orbiting for private purposes of his own. Well, why didn't you tell us about this before? No one asked me. And as you are all well aware, I am not programmed to ask questions, only answer them. All right. Let's contact him. Happy birthday to me. Smith, this is the Jupiter. Come in. Do you read me? I read you with abundant clarity, Professor. All right, I want you and that pod back here right away. We leave in 30 minutes. Adieu, adieu. May your journey flourish. May you reap the ripe fruits of accomplishment. Now listen to me. You can cut out all that... all that flowery talk and get right back here unless you want to get left behind. Oh, the folly of those who plant the seeds of threat in the soil of contentment. Such seeds will die, unnourished by fear. The eloquent beauty of nature is all that I need. Look, are you still in that pod? Can't activate the pod's return unless I'm sure he's in it. Well, that was the pod radio that he was talking from, wasn't it? Well, I'm not sure. I think we'll have to take the ship down. Look, he's been a pain in the neck since the first day out. Complaining, lying, loafing, interfering. And now this border, who we never wanted in the first place, has found himself a new home. In the soil of contentment, no less. You want him back. Are you through? Yes, I've said my piece. All right, we're going down. Normal landing procedures. All right, we'll go down and strap in. Soil of contentment.
pond should be about one mile in that direction. Say, hey, Will, we're going to need some machetes. Yes, sir. I'm not sure I'm right for this mission, John. I don't think I'll sound too sincere telling Smith how much we miss him and need him. All right, then. Maureen and Penny can go along and do the persuading, and you and I will be their bodyguards. Oh, I was going to think you put it that way. Yeah, thanks, son. Uh, Judy, I'd like you, Will, and the robot to stay here at the ship. We'll call you right away if Dr. Smith should show. Oh, he won't, Judy. No, Nature Boy will have to be carried back here on a pine needle stretcher. <laughs> Come on. Bye bye. <laughs> Too. Every time I cut through a vine or a branch, like this. There it is again. John, you don't suppose... Uh, no, please, please. Oh, I know, it's perfectly silly. You were going to say that plants might feel pain when they're hurt, weren't you? Yes. Oh, I don't think it's so silly, Mom. Plant life isn't so different from human life, and... Maybe there's something in this atmosphere that lets us hear them when they're hurt. Well, that's a fine and sensitive theory, Penny, but this jungle's between us and the pod. We've got to cut our way through. Come on. Smith wasn't at the pod, and he probably wasn't. I would guess that they've gone to look for him. No. If that were true, Dad would have called me. Will, what are you doing? You're going to need one of these. I'm not sure we should leave the ship. Judy, they could be in the same kind of mess that Dr. Smith is in. Now, we're going to go out there, and we're going to find them. But I'll go by myself if you'd rather oh, not. Oh, no. I'll go with you. All right. I'll leave a message and I'll meet you outside. Judy and I became worried about you and we went to look for you. Now, if you should return before we do, well. <laughs> This is indeed jungle warfare, but this is not camouflage. Well, then what is it? It just grew, Will Robinson. I stopped to rest in the course of my sentry duties, and before I could say Will Robinson, these trailing plants crept up on me, totally incapacitating me. Perhaps that's why we haven't heard from Dad. The same thing may have happened to them. Well, we'd better get them off him. 
sorry for hurting you, robot. It is not I who am being hurt, Will Robinson. It is these plants. What you are hearing are their screams of pain. You mean they are feelings? Affirmative. It is my considered opinion that this entire planet is the domain of the vegetable kingdom and that we are its enemies. We are at war with the plant world. Dr. Smith didn't sound like he was at war with the plant world. Dr. Smith is a two-timer. He could have gone over to the enemy. Well, the important thing right now is to get to the pod. Sorry, plant. All right, let's go. And we'd better not stop to rest, any of us. Sorry. Pardon me. In the eloquent beauty oh. of nature is all that what is I it? know. Can't you hear that voice? Oh, it's coming from over there. The go ahead, robot. Beneath some patriarchal tree, I lay upon the ground. His ancient arms uplifted, he and all the broad leaves over me clapped their little hands in glee with one continuous sound. Is that really you, Dr. Smith? Well, of course it's me. I see you've come to join me, to delight with me in the green gardens of this forest. Why did you come down here, Dr. Smith? You knew we were only going to orbit this planet. The reason escapes me. But I know now that I have found my true destiny. I shall live here in this green-haired forest and become one with it through all eternity. Dr. Smith, you're talking like some kind of a nature kook. Do you know that everyone is out looking for you? We even had to land the Jupiter on account of you. Now, we're going back to the space pod, and I hope you can remember where you left it. I do not remember the past. All that is valueless to me now. Look, robot, I want you to take Dr. Smith back to the Jupiter. Judy and I will go on and look for Mom and Dad. Do I have your permission to exert force, Will Robinson? Well, a little if necessary, but be gentle with him. He looks kind of sick. Come on, Judy. Sick indeed. I'm almost in full bloom. All right, Dr. Smith. Let's move it. Unhand me, you insensitive clump. A brutish product of the mineral world. That's what you are. Personally, I would prefer to leave you right where you are, Dr. Smith, but I have my orders. Get going! What happened to me? Where am I? I am glad you are finally off your nature kick, Dr. Smith. Nature kick, indeed. I abhor nature. It always makes me sneeze. <laughs> Shoo! And if you stand there much longer, Dr. Smith, worse things may happen. You will take root. Look! Ah, what is this? What is this? Save me! Save me from this dreadful jungle! I will. However, that does not mean that my low opinion of you has changed. I am merely obeying Will Robinson's orders. Follow me, Dr. Smith. Hurry! Lead on! Lead on! If they keep up their hollering, I'm going to start feeling sorry for them. Maybe that's what they want us to do, give up and leave. Well, we're not going to. What's the trouble? Oh, I guess you can see what kind of trouble we're in. Yes, yes. Tybo and his vegetable kingdom are up to their old tricks again. Tybo? All this is his, you know. He and his kind hate the animal world. You're telling me. Uh, do you think you can get us loose from these vines? Uh, yes, but don't tell Tybo, because if he knew, he'd probably turn me into something awful. 
like a red banana. Now, all you have to do is to talk to these plants. People don't talk to the plants enough, and they're very lonely. Now, please, let them go. These are my friends. <laughs> you see? It's simple. Oh, thank you. Oh, have you seen any other people around here? I mean, like me or like my brother Will here? Oh, brother and sister, are you? How charming. Oh, by the way, I will be. Oh, I'm Judy, and this is my brother Will. How do you do? Do you know nice where the you. others are? Willoughby! Here, Willoughby! Here, boy! My master's voice. I better go, and I advise you to go, too. Because if you don't, he'll turn you into... Here, Willoughby! Oh, excuse me. Let's follow him. Maybe he can lead us to Mom and Dad. <laughs> Good reason. It's some kind of hothouse. Penny! Oh, Penny. <laughs> Penny, what is it, dear? What's the matter? I don't know. I can hardly keep my eyes open. Oh. Just lie here, dear. Just keep your head back there. Well, whatever it is that carrot may have in store for us, we're getting out of here now. Get your machete, Don. <laughs> you both relax like the little one there. You'll find it so much easier to accept your future life forms if you don't fight it. What are you talking about? Think of yourselves as towering oaks, maybe, lifting your branches to the sky, shedding little acorns to grow more and more oaks like yourselves. You both have the bill for it, you know. You're crazy! Now let us out of here! I'm afraid that's impossible. Willoughby? Yes, sir. Keep an eye on them, Willoughby. I'm going to see how our brittle bone jellyfish is doing. <laughs> oh. Look what's standing guard of us. Oh, I'm no guard. On the contrary, I, I do feel sorry for you, but... I'm afraid of what Tybo might do to me if I helped you. <laughs> well, then, just tell us one thing. Is there a way out of here? Oh, 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 oh I'm afraid not. Uh, there's only Tybo's hydrostatic system underneath you, but I'm afraid he'd be quite offended if you tried to get out that way. Well, offended or not, that's just what we intend to do. Come on, let's start digging. <laughs> Something to do with the humidity. Don, let's check those coils. It can heat this place. It must be able to cool it, too. But how? I don't know. Let me see. Here. Let's try this one. If we can bring the temperature down 30 degrees, we've got a chance. Look. Snow. Now, we've got to work fast. That hydrostatic system he mentioned. It may not be a way out of here, but if it controls Tybo's water supply for the entire area, and we take it over... How do we get through that metal? 
We've got to try, that's how. Come on. if you see Tybo coming. Right. the difference between a pressure valve and a shut-off valve. It's got a fresh break in it, so we must have come this way. to me. My delicate back simply cannot stand this strain. Let it happen. Let him do what he likes with me. Let him change me into an orchid, a papaya tree, a fragrant bougainvillea. It's all the same to me now. You have excellent horticultural taste, Dr. Smith, but I still have my orders. Go away, Ninny, go away. What I cannot compute is why you came here in the first place. It's all your fault! Oh, why did I do it? How could I know that coming down here to pluck a posy for your birthday would end in such disaster? A posy for me? Yes, for you. I did not know you cared that much, Muddy. Now you know, Buddy. Come on, Muddy. I will pick you up and carry you bodily as I would carry a motherless child. Go away! Don't touch me, you ungrateful underling! Go and get me some help and tell them I shall require a stretcher. If that is a direct order, that is the way it will have to be. But I cannot leave without giving you one helpful hint. What is that? Keep moving, Dr. Smith. Keep moving. Thank you, Booby, but I do not require your advice. Very well, Dr. Smith, but do not say I did not warn you. Be gone! The advice of a tin-plated traitor. Indeed. And what did he say? Keep moving? Yes, keep moving. I must keep moving. I must. I will. The rolling stone gathers no Boston. I must keep moving.
service to you and Miss Judy, Will Robinson. However, the same cannot be said about Dr. Smith. What do you mean? Didn't you take him back to the ship? Negative. It cut me to the quick to have to abandon him. But he ordered me to leave him. And when a body gives a robot an order, what is a robot to do but obey? Well, I'm countermanding that order. We can't just leave him out here to become a... a, a... An orchid, a papaya, a bougainvillea is what he would prefer to become. Well, just forget it. I order you to take him back to the ship if you have to drag him by his feet. Especially by his feet. His feet are his Achilles heels. All right, let's go. Well, be careful for some more of those mulch pits. There could be thousands of them on this planet. <laughs> Same down here. How are we ever going to work it out? Hey, there's a lid here. Give me a hand. Main shut off switch. That could be it. What do you think? I don't know. It may shut off the water and kill the plants, but on the other hand, it may turn off the oxygen, destroy us all. Marine. Tybo's coming. Come on. Hurry up, he's coming. going to be so pretty in her new life. I had a, a trailing arbutus in mind for her. Best I'll be able to do now is something in a much lower class, goldenrod, or mustard or something. What we've done, Tybo, is to try to preserve what we are, not what you'd have us be. Can't leave you alone for a minute. The moment my back is turned, there you go trying to kill yourselves. Why can't you be meek and mild like Willoughby? Willoughby, where is he? Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Probably ran off to warn me. All right, this may cause you a momentary discomfort. Protect yourselves. <laughs> you to go back to the ship and stay there till dawn. If you haven't heard from us by then, take the ship and get out of here. Look, Dan, the robot's not far from here. He could crash through this easily. Now, that's an idea. All right, get him. Worth a try. Come on. Give me a hand. All right, Johnny, watch out for time. I will.
it stops circulating. Yeah. If they don't have a backup system or a reservoir to take its place. <laughs> I got here as fast as I could, Will Robinson, but it was already out of my hands. Boy, Dr. Smith, I was afraid something like this was going to happen to you. You should have kept moving around. It's kismet, my boy. What will be, will be. Of course, I should have preferred to see myself as something more graceful, perhaps. A lovely calla lily or a fragrant rose. Howsoever, all things considered, I am quite content. I don't see anything to be happy about in being an oversized salary stock, Dr. Smith. Be careful, Judy. Slanderous attacks on the vegetable kingdom do not sit lightly on us vegetables. Oh, no. Will you kindly tell this creature to stop nibbling at me? It jars me to my very roots. Willoughby, you're going to have to stop nibbling on Dr. Smith. He says it jars him. I'm sorry, but I have Tybo's permission to nibble on the Rosetta Ball on Bellaferro. Just so long as I don't swallow the seeds. But Dr. Smith isn't a real umbrella. He's not a real celery stock. He's an animal, just like us. Now you are appealing to my kinship with my fellow creatures again. You, you, you know how timid I am. Besides, I'm hungry. Now lay off, Willoughby. Dr. Smith doesn't have that much hair as it is. He's going to look horrible when we change him back if you keep plucking at him. Change me back? It's out of the question. May I say that never, never have I been as happy as I am now. You know, there is something rather sturdy and vigorous about celery. The good earth, the shining sun, the pleasant companionship of one's fellow vegetables. Of course, I could do with a bit more rain, perhaps. Dr. Smith, you're acting like a real stock of celery. Of course I am. I look like celery. I draw moisture from the soil like celery. I feel the pulsing crunch of life. I should apologize for my appearance. A good soaking rain would freshen me up so. Judy, you'd better stay here with Dr. Smith. I'll take the robot and go find Mom and Dad. Come on, robot. We've got a big job ahead of us. To Ken, Dr. Smith, with his coat so gay. Do you Ken, Dr. Smith, at the break of day? Do you ken Dr. Smith when he's far, far away with his beans and his peas in the morning? I'm so happy. Strange, I seem to be losing pressure. suggest that you exercise the utmost caution. Tybo's transmutation powers can be extremely dangerous, especially to young members of the animal kingdom, as well as potty-like members like Dr. Smith. I'll watch it. Sir? Ah, there you are, young seedling. You've come to make some sort of sentimental appeal, am I correct? You could call it that if you like, I guess. <laughs> I know exactly how you animals think. All heart and sympathy for each other. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, 
I know you're a real vegetable, Wiz. And it must be great to be able to change one kind of a life form into another. Well, I'm glad one of you animals appreciates us. Go on. But it's all wrong. Why change Dr. Smith into a stalk of celery? And what do you think you're going to do with my parents and Penny and Don? Why can't you just be satisfied to be what you are and let us be what we are? I mean, I'll admit that we eat certain vegetables sometimes. But there are plenty of other plants that we just grow to look at and admire because they're so beautiful. How would you like it if someone were going to monkey around with you and turn you into a water bug? You've got to change Dr. Smith back. You've got to let us all go. Impossible. Give up all my grand plans for you. Oh, incidentally, I have a very fine plant in mind for you. A magnificent young sapling. A, a willow, perhaps, or a silver birch. John. Branwell, run! Don't. Don't help you. No matter where you fall, you will take root. Robot, attack! Attack! I am out of power, Will Robinson. All this running back and forth has exhausted my... my... Uh, uh. Robot! Robot, help us! All right, Tybo. I guess you win. There was never any doubt of it. What are we going to do? Cover for me. I'm going down to the hydrostatic station again. <laughs> transplant here, a transfusion here. He's a regular plant surgeon. You know, sometimes he lets me act as his nurse. I, I, I carry his instruments in this pouch here. What kind of instrument? Well, here, here, have a look. Oh, be careful of that one. That is a sharp one. What does he do with this? Uh, shots. Lethal shots. Sometimes he has to put a, a sick plant out of its misery. You know how it is. Isn't there something he does sometimes that, well, changes things back to what they were? Oh, yes. He often does that when the new uh, plant life doesn't work out. Perhaps there's something like that we could do for Dr. Smith. Do? Get him back to what he was. Oh, <laughs> but he's such a healthy-looking stock of celery. Oh, <laughs> He'd rather be what he was, Willoughby, not what he is. No, I would not. Let us not interfere with Tybo's magnificent handiwork. A celery is as a celery does. Oh, he doesn't know what he's saying. Please, Willoughby, help me change him back to his former self. Oh, Tybo won't like that. Neither will I. Oh, please, Willoughby. Please help me. After all, you are one of us. Well, I suppose his celery oils could be dried up. Oh, dear. I shall wither away. Well, only the vegetable part would wither. We might be able to preserve the animal part. Here. One drop of this will do it. Supposing we can't preserve the animal part. Well, Tybal will probably make a study of his remains to find out what went wrong. Then I guess it's up to Dr. Smith to make the choice. I already have. I stay as I am. And don't you dare try any of your murderous animal experiments on me. Oh, you look fine now, Dr. Colorful and crunchy and all that. But what do you do when the bad weather comes? Gales, storms, floods? Why, you could be washed away. Or there could be a long drought and you just dry up. You just go to seed and blow away. Oh, dear. Perhaps. 
Perhaps I'd better have a drop of that stuff after all. Just one drop on the top of the head, that does it best. Now this, this won't hurt very much, just turn your head. All right, Dr. Smith. Careful. Here I go. There. Oh, dear. It won't do him any good. You'll have to stop eventually. Got to keep going, Will. You've got to keep going. They seem to be losing steam. You play one of your mechanical tricks on me. I... I have not the strength. But I wish I had. Put the dials. I think John's done it. We've got the stone until John gets back. Dive all? You must be getting awfully tired of playing this game with us. Tired? I barely started. You'll make a powerful looking teakwood tree. Uh, where's the other animal? Tell me something, Tybo. Why do you want to turn me into a, a teakwood tree? Would be one of my better achievements. Oh, you're forgetting something, aren't you? You see, you're forgetting human resistance. And you can't stop that unless you, unless you kill us. If you kill us, then you can't change us, can you? You mean you'd rather die than be a tree? Like they say, you've seen one tree, you've seen them all. I thought I could do this with a minimum of trouble, but I see now a crash transmutation is necessary. It must have more steam. <laughs> Moisture! Water! I must have water! <laughs> working. Take the children back to the ship. Prepare for liftoff. All right. Come on, we'll get Will. Water. 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 Moisture! Moisture! I need moisture! Wonderful. Wonderful. We better stay with him or we'll miss the transformation. Moisture! Moisture! I need moisture! There he is! Moisture! Moisture! Ah! It's me again! How wonderful! Never fear, Smith is here! Let's get back to the greenhouse. Yeah. You gave me water. Why? It's 
a human instinct not to let anything or anyone die of thirst. I won't. Dad, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Help your mother get back to the ship. She's got the children. Poor Tybo. He didn't know how to live and let live. I'll have to nurse him back to health, I suppose. I was thinking that perhaps you'd like to come with us. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you for the offer, but I'll have to take care of Tybo. All right. It must have been a dreadful agony for him to realize that you died of e dehydration. Died my foot. I happen to be alive. <laughs> for Tybo, you are dead. <laughs> Buddy boy. What do you want? I need a little help until my power systems regenerate themselves. You would not turn me down, would you, old buddy? Don't old buddy me, you old booby. Come along! Stay tuned for some exciting scenes from next week's show. Next week, the space family Robinson is marooned on the deadly junk planet. Mr. Junkman! Why is it moving? It's gone. It's a pity. A lot of good metal is lost. <laughs> Right here on this channel.